Thanks. What's your name? Tara Williams. Hi, Tara. Hi, Shepard. How you doing? We break up and then we get back together. And... For a man who loved to talk... Did you kill your wife? No. You have no idea where she no is. Idea. And talk... I lost 30 pounds. Jenny Craig's got nothing on me. Drew Peterson has been silent for the last year. Locked up, charged with the murder of his third wife, Kathleen Savio. But the case against him is being constructed around a woman who will never speak again. It's being built on the words, the alleged words, the unproven words of a dead person being conveyed through her, her friends, relatives and acquaintances. A man that you're representing is facing words from the grave that may send him to jail for the rest of his life. That's absolutely correct. In what's being called Drew's Law, a court in Illinois has been hearing pre-trial testimony from family and friends who say Kathleen told them she expected her husband to kill her. It's an unprecedented attempt to use hearsay evidence from the dead. She said Drew is going to kill me and it's going to look like an accident. He can make me disappear. So, will Drew Peterson be damned from the grave? It was on a bitterly cold January morning last year when I first met Drew Peterson. He was his usual jocular self. How would you characterize your relationship with Kathleen? I think it was very comical, witty. The former Bolingbroke cop was under siege from the media after his fourth wife Stacy had suddenly disappeared. He was named a person of interest and shortly thereafter police reopened the case surrounding Kathleen's death in 2004 which had been ruled an accident. Kathleen, my wife of uh, nine years now, eight years, how long have we been married? <laughs> Seven years. Peterson admitted that his relationship with Kathleen was tempestuous and that police were called to their house on 18 separate occasions. I was a smart ass, you know, she'd, she'd get mad at me for something and she'd be going off on a rampage and instead of calming her down, I'd look at her and I'd go, let me talk to Kathy now. <laughs> it, would set her, it would set her off even worse. So actually, you enraged her. Yes. You made things worse. Right. Why did you do that? It was just what came out. I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't want it to happen, but it's what flowed. Why did she file for an order for protection from you? She had an attorney, and the order of protection was filed strictly to get her to have the house, sole custody of the house. But in the order, it actually spoke of fear of violence. And of course, that's what they're going to say, because that's the elements they need to obtain an order of protection. You, you don't think she was telling the truth? Though? No, never. Savio's sister, who's given evidence in the current hearing, says she was aware of their troubles, but said nothing at the time. Can you understand why some people were very critical? Because here you are now in 2010, saying your sister told you that her husband would kill her, yet you never said anything to anyone I didn't six get years ago. I didn't get the chance to do that. Um, but would it have been so difficult for you to inform the police? How could I inform somebody? the police? Drew was the police. He was the police. He controlled everything. Drew and Kathleen divorced in 2003. Less than a year later, Peterson says he raised the alarm after she failed to return his calls and he rushed to her house. I heard screaming upstairs, and there was her friend Mary who went upstairs, and she was dead in the bathtub. I checked for life signs, and I knew at that particular time I didn't belong there, so I called for additional police units to show up and take charge of the scene. Peterson drove us to the scene, but seemed remarkably detached and unemotional as he recalled finding his ex-wife dead. That's the house that uh, Kathleen you know, died in the bathtub. Must be difficult to look at it, though, as the house in which you're former wife died. Right. Uh, it was kind of emotional, but it was like, you know, what can you do? Life goes on. The original autopsy said Kathleen had drowned accidentally. By then, Peterson married his fourth wife, Stacy, and they had two children. But in 2007, she suddenly disappeared. The police never located Stacy, but they did find some intriguing correspondence. She sent an email to friends, and I quote, as I mature with age, I'm finding that the relationship I'm in is controlling, manipulative, and somewhat abusive. Now, that doesn't even sound like something she would say. So I really question the, the origin of that email. Stacy's minister also emerged, saying the reason she disappeared 
was because she knew the truth about how Peterson's third wife, Kathleen, had died. Are you aware that she said that she told him that you had confessed to killing your wife? Right. I heard that. But again, wouldn't you seek out authorities if you heard something that coming out of somebody's mouth? And I really question whether she actually said it or whether it's something he fabricated. There was other correspondence too. Soon after their divorce, Kathleen Savio had written to Assistant State's Attorney Elizabeth Fragel, expressing fears that her estranged husband might kill her. And it wasn't the only letter. She also appears to have told her friend Pam Bosco, I love you. If anything happens to me, he killed me. It wasn't an accident. No, and that sounds suspiciously like the same thing that Kathleen said, almost to the T. And Kathleen, I guess, wrote letters and told people the same thing, and that if, if I show up dead, he did it. For the past three weeks in a court in Illinois, prosecutors have been focusing on 15 hearsay statements. Drew's law was passed in 2008, and it allowed a judge to admit reliable hearsay in a first-degree murder case if prosecutors could prove that the defendant killed the witness to keep him or her from testifying. Why is it that so many people from varied backgrounds seem to be saying that his wives told them that he was likely to kill them? I think it's almost like a, um, a uh, I'll call it a mob effect or you know, a lynch mob effect that it just there's a, uh, everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon because they want a result. Are you saying the equivalent of this is, is almost like a Salem witch hunt? There's no qu question about it. They believe he's the devil and uh, they want to see the devil uh, brought down. But here's the problem, Mr. Brodsky. We've got Sharon Bichowski, right. Stacy's neighbor, mm -hmm. who says, but Stacy said, if something happens to me, it won't be an accident. He's going to kill me. Anna Doman, Kathleen Savio's sister, take care of my children. Drew said, he's going to kill me. Nick Pontarelli, Kathleen's neighbor. If anything ever happened to her, it wasn't an accident. I have to ask you again, how is it possible that such a large number of people from such diverse backgrounds all say, almost to the letter, that the women themselves expressed a deep, profound anxiety that their husband would kill them. There's something wrong. Things are never that consistent. So when you have this, what I'll call eerie consistency, I think it re really re gives rise to lessening the credibility rather than strengthening it. And given the fact that Kathleen Savio cannot be cross-examined, the defense believes that Drew Peterson should not be convicted of murder on the basis of hearsay. The state attorney would not speak to us due to a standing gag order, but those on the side of the prosecution believe the words of the dead are sufficient condemnation. What will your reaction be if the judge decides to dismiss all of this hearsay evidence? I would be very upset. Um, um, in my heart, he has killed her. I believe that he is a man of great secrets. Capable of murdering your sister? Yes and the judge is expected to rule on the hearsay evidence as early as this week.